Welcome to Art Alive, the arts programme. Well, here I'm with Leslie Pilling, who's got to tell us about a most unusual organisation and her part in it. Leslie, welcome to Arts Alive. Thank you. Thank you. Circle G Foundation. Mm -hmm. What is it about? We started the Circle G Foundation in 2010, um, and it was primarily to save Elvis's ranch in Horn Lake, Mississippi. It was for sale. It was literally rotting by but the roadside. This isn't Graceland. No, this is so his ranch. So what, what's the ranch? He, he owned the ranch in 1967, and he spent his honeymoon there. And it was a place that Elvis used to escape from the pressures of, the, of being Elvis Presley. So sort of a holiday home. Yes. Yeah. We don't hear about this place, though, do no, we? No, it's a very private place for Elvis. Um, and consequently, there are very few photographs of Elvis there. Um, obviously, the family have photographs. The archives have photographs, but in the, in the general world, there are very few about of Elvis there. And he loved the place. He could ride his horses, he could relax, he could go out to think. Because he was approaching a crossroads in his career, he was a newly married man, he was an expectant father, a lot of changes, and he loved the ranch. So what's your connection with the ranch? How did you find out about it? Well, I've been an Elvis fan since I was seven, a long time ago. Um, and I first went to the ranch in 2010 and I stood there and I looked at it falling apart um, and I said I'm going to do something about this. So we came home and I started initially a Facebook campaign um, and within days we had thousands of supporters on Facebook and over the last four and a half years um, it's gone worldwide and we have ambassadors in 15 countries uh, we have 50 team members and in 2013 we were approached by some um, individuals in Destin in Florida who wanted to buy the ranch. So for 12 months I worked with them as a, an advisor, um, teaching them a little bit about the Elvis world and the intricacies of the Elvis world and then in April 2014 they actually bought the ranch. So, so it wasn't being lived in, was it no, derelict? it was derelict. It was falling apart. You know, they had squatters in there at one point. So, um, you know, we had to do something about it. Because as Elvis fans, we realise it should be saved. And it has been, so that's great. So what was the history of it originally? Did Elvis have it built? No, Elvis was actually out on a horse buying expedition in uh, 1967. And at the ranch there's a 75 foot cross that's illuminated, which was put there by the previous owner. The cross drew Elvis's attention. Of course, he was a very, very de devout he, man, he was wasn't he? From his, yeah. from a, from his boyhood. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, and he saw the cross. He stopped, and then he saw a for sale sign. And Elvis saw this as some sort of a sign. A sign. <laughs> literally, um, and he bought it practically on the spot. Um, this is what this check is you've That's got. Right. You've got a very special artefact here. I have. You? It's the pride of my collection. It's um, the original check from Elvis's checking, a personal checking account that he wrote for the deposit on the ranch for $5,000 in 1967. Um, what did he actually buy the ranch for? How much was it originally? I think it was, it was around the region of $430,000. Uh, and when the new owners bought it last year, they paid four million US dollars <laughs> for it. It's got a marvellous provenance though now. That's right, it's the Elvis connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's, what's the way forward with the ranch? How, how, how's it going to go from here? Right, well, our mission statement for the Circle G, um, we wanted to preserve the ranch for the Elvis fans to visit. We wanted to have it recognised for its significance in the historic part of, of Horn Lake and, and Memphis but also to recognise Elvis's charitable legacy because he did an awful lot for charity that even now isn't known about um, and our Circle G Foundation we've we've done that by donating large amounts to charity over the last 12 months um, but the new owners tell us that they're going to renovate it they're going to hold concerts there which will benefit um, armed forces charities and work with disabled children so all that is in line with our mission statement and we're really thrilled about it. Well, there's not a lot heard about his charitable work. You, you hear about people like Andrew Carnegie, of course, mm. who was a great philanthropist. What sort of thing was Elvis involved with? 
Elvis every year, round about Christmas, um, gave large charitable donations to around 50 charities um, in Memphis and the surrounding areas. He supported um, polio research in the 50s, uh, cancer research, St Jude's um, Research Hospital in Memphis, which is working with children with cancer. Um, there are just so many stories of Elvis's charitable works with individuals. If he read in the newspaper that somebody needed an operation, he would contact them, anonym well, get somebody to contact them for him anonymously, and a cheque would appear in the post. Really? But you don't hear about no, this sort of no. thing. That's, that's the sort of thing he did all the time. This year is a very special year because Elvis would have been... 80 years old. It seems astonishing, it almost impossible to believe that. It does. I mean, it, it's, it's over 35 years since he left us, so, you know, it's, it's a long time. And I believe you've got some of your own very special personal memories as well here. Yes, I have. I've got um, some items from my personal collection. Um, I've got a chain from a jumpsuit, a stage-worn jumpsuit, um, that's seen in Elvis, That's the Way It Is one of the famous documentaries. Um, uh, how did you get that? Was I bet these things are like gold, aren't they? You keep your eyes open. You, you look at auctions online. If I've been in Memphis, I've bought things in Memphis at auctions. But you've, you've got to be careful. The, you know, you've got to have the correct authenticity behind them because there's a lot of things out there that aren't genuine, but these things are. And you're going to, later on this evening, you'll be auctioning a very, very special item. Yes, we have an autograph um, that Elvis signed one week before he passed away. Normally when he signed autographs, he signed them Best Wishes Elvis Presley or Sincerely Elvis Presley. On this occasion, a friend of mine asked him to sign an autograph to use on the front of a fan club magazine. And he said, well, what shall I put? And she said, well, it's for the fans. So he literally signed it to my fans, Elvis Presley. So that's very, very rare. Then. It's very rare. It's very rare, yeah. Well, I, I hate to think what that the sort of price that might draw. Well, it would be nice to, to you know, make a, a, a big price. Um, and that's going to the Circle G Foundation? Yeah, part of it is. Yes. Um, but part of it's going to the lady who, who was donated it because she was a friend of Elvis's and um, we're trying to help cricket as well. Well, thank you, Leslie, for that fascinating insight into the real person behind the man. Thank you, that was a pleasure. It's nice to be able to talk about him in that way. Well, we're going into the break now. After the break, we've got this fascinating feature called Recipe for Scouse. It's not a, a recipe as such. What it is, it's a new short film made by young Dada in association with the Walker Art Gallery. Very much looking forward to that. Welcome back to Arts Alive, the arts programme. Recipe for Scouse. This is a unique foray into the cultural background and makeup of what it is to be from Liverpool. A new short film, Young Dada, in association with the Walker Art Gallery. Here it is. to make scouts. But first of all, I need to pickle the beetroot. Beetroot is purple. Purple is red and blue mixed together. Fight the scouts for four teams. Blue is for Everton. Red is for Liverpool. Just in case you didn't know. F O O T B A L L Football! Liverpool are the best team. Everton is the best team in the world. We toss your heart. Liverpool! FC, yay! The Loggy Reds! Everton are the best! Nathan Mays is the best player in the world and he's right, he plays for Everton. There's definitely something special about the place and the people that are here. There's people who've been here for 20, 30, 40 years who you know, it, it means everything to them, and, and I think, you know, when, when you when you arrive here as a player, I think even the foreign players, it doesn't take long for them to to realise that 
there's a special quality about the place. What does Leighton Baines think as a, as a city? It's one of the best cities in the country, in my opinion. Right, let's get down to business. Now I've finished pickling with the beetroot, we can start on the meat. If you are vegetarian, you can use a meat substitute. Meat is one of the most important ingredients in Scouts. It's like the music in our city. There's no Scouts without music. Liverpool's Brill, Liverpool's Cove. We've got rappers and buskers too. Here's a short list of just a few. Thames, Eddie Mac and Twix on two. Liverpool's a hub for groundbreaking edgy music. Just think of all the singers and the bands from here. Atomic Kitten, The Lightning Seeds, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, the Zootons, and of course the Beatles. Liverpool has influenced my music because there's a certain energy and warmth about the city and the people and the different cultures that are here. The music scene in Liverpool right now is, is pretty vibrant. I feel, you know, there's a lot of artists um, that are doing their thing um, and a lot of different genres, um, should say. And even the fact that people are just blending genres to the point where it's not even a genre, like what is it that you do? I don't know, I just make music and it's good. You know what I mean? There's a lot of artists who I feel, when I'm listening to them, that's where I place them. I think buskers around the city is definitely um, a great thing for the music scene. And even just for the average person walking around the city, I mean, we all love music, so why not have music wherever you go around the city? It's, it's perfect, you just don't have to put your headphones on. music to be honest you got every single house event you need you got circus you got chipuku you got band and silence all different djs around the world coming into one city amazing vibe and you also got alternative sort of music if you want to go to o2 academy straight down the road from here so everyone's got a wide choice of music if they want to i need to go and get some more before i compare the vegetables okay come with me and you see how it's done in Liverpool, you have lots of water. It's called the Mersey. What can you see? It's the River Mersey, Captain. I think we're coming into Liverpool. I came from my boat for the Titanic, but you know when she will arrive. I can see that good man out of the Russian who wants to abolish slavery. This slavery has been going down for far too long. I have first-hand experience on a slavery ship. As of today, I am going to work to destroy slavery, and I will not rest until every last single bit of slavery is abolished. Yeah! I can see that famous author, Herman Melville. For miles you may walk along the riverside, pressing dark after dark, like a chain of a man's fortresses. Hi Captain, have you got any jobs going? Philly Gray, um, our grandmothers are ill, um, we need the money, we say have you got any jobs. What's that? There's a tall ship, the Zebu, Captain, and it looks like, it, it definitely is, pirates Captain, there's pirates. Take the wheel, matey. How's it going, mate? It is going the fine. Tell me something. What do you think of the city? Spent our last days here, and I'd say gained a liking to it. When I die, I want to be buried here. Good choice indeed. There are many places for many pirates to go. I agree, I agree. Captain, there's a lady over there blushing. Why don't you offer her hand and show her the city? I'll do just that. My lady, would you like to come and take a look at the view? What do you reckon of our fine city we have accompanied for the past couple of days? I really love the boat. Yeah, I will say, most of the harbouring boats that we see here are as, are as beautiful here as many other boats and women that I've met. 
including yourself. Now time for the camera. Liverpool was famous for the Connor Day and Connors, like Vicky Tong Ridson, Betty Starr, Terry Teeter, Don Bissett, Ratsit Sale, and many more. Not to mention the unforgettable Ken Dodd. What do you call a man with two bottoms? Cheeky. Why can't you trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Why does a gorilla have big nostrils? Because it has big fingers. <laughs> Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Why was the sand wet? Because the seaweed. Where do sheep get the wool cut? At the barbers. <laughs> Why can't a bicycle stand by itself? Because it's too tired. <laughs> Why can't pirates do the alphabet? Because they get stuck at sea. How did the barber win the race? He knew a shortcut. <laughs> oh. Why did God invent this bar to smell? So deaf people like me can enjoy it as well. Hey, what's this? It's a P. Where does the king keep his armies? Up his sleeveys. What's this? It's a pee on a fork. What's brown and sticky? A stick. What's this? It's a pee in boiling water. What did the fish say after he swam into a wall? Damn! <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for the potatoes. The Potatoes in Scouts are the buildings and the wealthy architecture that is the city. Here are a couple of pigeons from the city to show you around. What's with that round building? It looks like a heart. Liverpool's Metropolitan Cathedral of Christ the King. It's the largest Catholic cathedral in England. This is the fifth biggest cathedral in the entire world. Oh, what those bears doing up there? I'm gonna knock one of them off. It spins my spot. You can't do that. It's a liar bird. Liverpool will sink into the mazy if you do that. Oh, well, that's what they say. The cult in our city is like an onion and scouts. There's lots and lots of ways to it and it has the most amazing flavour. In 2008, Liverpool was the capital of culture and people visited from all over the world. And they still do, even giants. It's quite interesting stuff, isn't it, wasn't it? Yeah. Since it was the capital of culture, it never looked back. We could go see some art at the Tate over there, or go see some photography at the Open Eye Gallery, or we could go see a play. Where? There's lots of theatres in Liverpool. So. There's the Everyman, the Unity, the Empire, there's loads. We should go and see them all. Come on then, let's get going. to be able to find the other special ingredients and get a taste of the city for yourself.
So that's it, combination of Elvis and Scouse. What a shame that Elvis never got to appear in Liverpool. Perhaps had he gone on a bit longer, he may have come to our new Echo Arena. That would have been a concert to, to really treasure, but it didn't happen. Anyway, thanks very much for watching Arts Alive. See you next time. Thank you.